do my business. Beautiful. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Aldersgate, where all are welcome, and all means all. I'm Vince Fratello, a lay person here at Aldersgate, and I will be leading worship today while Pastor Wan Ji visits her mom. We hold them both in our prayers. April 28th is Yom HaShoah, a day of remembrance of the Holocaust in World War II. This is a moment to remember that all of us must speak up, speak out against intolerance in God's world, be it based on religion, race, gender, or sexual orientation. This is a moment for us to consider how we may, how we must bear witness against injustices near and far, rather than remaining silent as occurred so often during the Holocaust.
Please join me in the call to worship, responding as all. In the shadow of resurrection, we, we will live out, out our, our faith. faith. In the crumbs of broken bread, we, we will, will proclaim, proclaim Christ, Christ is risen. risen. In the wine of the supper, we will, we will trust, trust the, the promise of, of grace. grace. In the community of the empty tomb, we, we will, will believe, believe what the world, world does not. In the gravestone, now rolled away, we, we will break, break out in the joy of, of resurrection. resurrection. Come, let us worship. Let us pray. We are your witnesses, O oh God, that in you, suffering and death does not have to, the final word. Praise be to you for the dawning of this new day, a day where gentleness rules over might. Spirit makes a way for true community, and love always wins. This is the day you have given us. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. The flowers of the field are crying to be heard. The trees of the forest are singing And all of the mountains with one voice Will join in the chorus of this world And I will not be silent and I will not be quiet anymore And I will not be silent And I will not be quiet anymore We could definitely use those hands of clapping Thank you Running through the forest Dive into the lake Bare feet on beaches white Standing in the canyon Painted hills all around And the wind against my skin Every ocean, every sea, every river, every stream Every mountain, every tree, every glade of grass will sing We will sing Make a joyful noise, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all of the earth. I will not be silent. And I will not be silent. And I will not be quiet anymore. I will not be silent. And I will not be quiet anymore. And I will not be silent And I will not be quiet anymore And I will not be silent And I will not be quiet anymore 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 Wonderful, thank you. Thank you for clapping and helping. <laughs> Hi, good morning everybody. Um, my name is Molly Pierce, I'm known as the Lucy Old Lady. And I'm up here happily after two years of not being up here. I'm up here to um, appear for the one Lucy Old Lady. Super excited. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Okay, well, I'll be sending out an email as well via um, the office so you, people can look there too. Thank you. Here. I'm giving Miss Jan a break this morning as well, and would like to talk to the children of all ages. <laughs> First, I'd like a show of hands. How many of you have ever been bullied? <laughs> yeah, pretty much everyone. <laughs> now, how many of you have seen someone else being bullied? Yeah, mm -hmm. same. People can get bullied because they are different or less powerful or less popular. Sometimes the bully is a person and sometimes it can be a group or all of society. The problem of what to do about bullying is a hard one. When I was in high school, I saw someone being bullied and I told the bully to cut it out. As <laughs> I was one of the smallest kids in school, the bully decided to bully me instead. So that, that, that did not quite work out. But, you know, there were other kids there too. If one or two of them had stood beside me, that might have made a difference. As a church, we've decided we want to stand with people who are being bullied. No, we won't get into fights with the bullies, but there are a lot of us, and we will give all the support in our power to the people being bullied. And we will try to be clear to those who are hurting others, whether they mean to or not, what God tells us is the right thing to do. There's another question that I did not want to make everyone answer. Have you ever looked back and saw that you were the bully, whether you meant to be or not? That's another hard one because it means we need to look at our actions towards others in the moment and ask ourselves, is this what Jesus would want us to do? Will you pray with me? God, help us to stand with those who are weak and being hurt so that all of us together can be strong and kind. Help us to look at our words and actions so we can be part of the solution. With you beside us, we know we can do the right thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So this next song, it's kind of new to me. Um, but I've come to really like it. It's called Draw the Circle Wide. And um, sort of to tag on to children's moment, uh, I was in a fourth grade classroom Tuesday. And uh, as, as often, I'll go into class and try to make sure that they understand what my rules for running a class are. And then I ask them, what are your rules for running a class? <laughs> and one little girl, I mean, I've got really good suggestions, and they're, you know, they're pretty common. And she says, uh, we will be inclusive. <laughs> and I thought, well, a fourth grader, that's a pretty big word, right? So I said, so what does that mean? And she told me, she gave me a, you know, we'll include everybody. And I says, well, why don't we just practice that real quick? And so she says, hello, my name is Aaliyah. And she holds out her hand, so I grab her hand and shake it, and, and we exchange a few pleasantries. Their classroom 
was also set up as a giant circle. Well, okay, a rectangle, but all of the, all of the students were facing inward to a large uh, empty space. And I asked the teacher about that. She goes, well, because I've never seen that in a classroom. Not, not in elementary, not in high school, not in middle school. It's, it's an unusual arrangement. Um, but she says, it's really important for building community in this classroom. The kids need to see each other. They need to see a visible reminder of what it's like to be inclusive. So I think this song says it very well. Maybe I shouldn't just, maybe I've, I've taken up my time. We can't do the song. <laughs> <laughs> Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we'll stand side by side. Draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. Really simple, join us. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we'll stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Do that again. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone. Stand, standing side by side. Yeah, stand and sing. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Sing the verse. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we'll stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide, draw the circle wide, draw the circle wide, draw it wider still, let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide, draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Lovely. Will you pray with me? God has not finished with the world. We believe God loves the world and longs for it to be reborn. In the good news of resurrection, we will work with God. We proclaim God has not turned a back on the hungry. We believe God longs for fields of wheat to be shared among us all. In the good news of resurrection, we will share with God. We proclaim God has not finished with peace. 
We believe God longs for peacemakers to rise and make peace once more. In the good news of resurrection, we will be peacemakers with God. We proclaim God has not left the houseless without shelter. We believe God longs for all to be gathered in and welcomed. In the good news of resurrection, we will welcome the stranger with God. We proclaim God has not forgotten the poor. We believe God longs for the rich and poor to live more equally. In the good news of resurrection, we will change things with God. We pro proclaim God has not completed the task. We believe God longs for the reign of love to be born. In the good news of resurrection, we will be kingdom builders with God. God, we thank you for joys of new life. David and Heidi James, coming grandchild. John and Wilma Tucker's great-grandson. We pray for those recovering from surgery, accidents, and ill health. Sabrina McIntyre, John Sawachter, Mary Atkins, Briar Miller, Wilma Tucker, Jolie's sister, and Pastor Wanji's mom. We pray for travel mercies for Pastor Wanji and Patty and Bill Ferguson. On a personal note, I thank you for the 35th anniversary of my first date with my lovely wife. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection, we pray for the losses of Pauline Williams and Obert and Marietta Ronstad. In a time of constant change, we pray for calmness and steadfastness. And now, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture today is from Acts chapter 5, verses 17 through 35 and 38 through 43, reading from the Inclusive Bible. Then the priest and all of his supporters, who were members of the Sadducee party, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and threw them into jail. During the night, however, an angel of God opened the gates of the jail and led them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and tell the people all about this life. When they heard this, they went into the temple at dawn and resumed their teaching. When the high priest and his supporters arrived, they convened, sorry, they convened the uh, Sanhedrin, the full senate of Israel, and sent word to the jail that the prisoners were to be brought in. But when the temple guard got to the jail, they couldn't find them, and they hurried back to report. We found the jails securely locked and the guards at the post outside. But when we opened the cell, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the high priests didn't know what to make of it. Then a courier arrived with fresh news. At this very moment, those you put in jail are in the temple. They're standing there in the temple teaching the people at that. The captain went off with the guard and arrested them once again, but without a show of force, for fear of being stoned by the crowd. The apostles were taken before the Sandrahen, and the priest began to inter interrogate them. We gave you strict orders not to teach about that name, 
Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you're determined to make us responsible for this Jesus' blood. To this, Peter and the apostles replied, Better for us to obey God than people. The God of our ancestors has raised Jesus, whom you put to death by hanging him on a tree. This one, who has been exalted to God's right hand as ruler and savior, is bringed to bring repentance and the forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are eyewitnesses to this, and so is the Holy Spirit who has been given to those who obey God. When the Sandrahin heard this, they were furious and intended to kill the apostles. However, a member of the Sandrahin, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, an authority of the law and respected by the people, stood up and said, the apostles be removed from the room. He asked that the apostles be removed from the room. Then he addressed the Sandrahin. Israelites, think twice about what you are going to do with these people. My advice is that you leave these people alone and let them be. If this movement, this activity, is of a human origin, it will destroy itself. If, on the other hand, it comes from God, not only will you be unable to destroy them, but you might find yourselves fighting against God. They took Gamaliel's advice and called the apostles and flogged them. After ordering them not to speak again in the name of Jesus, they dismissed them. The apostles left the Sandrahin full of joy that they had been judged worthy to suffer. Shame for the sake of the name Every day they preached in the temple and in people's homes, continually pro proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. They were imprisoned. They were flogged. And they went forth rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer shame for the sake of the name. They were told not to teach of Jesus anymore, so they went out and taught even more about him. The apostles were not ordinary people. The actual lectionary scripture for today is but a small piece in the middle of this that Karen read. Thank you to her for that long reading. But I want you to hear the whole thing, to see the scope of who the apostles were. At that moment in time, there was no such thing as a Christian. This passage is not an anti-Semitic rant about how the Jews killed Jesus. This was one group of Jews speaking with the power of their conviction about the future of their religion to another group of Jews. You know, the ones with entrenched power. This is a deep challenge to the authorities based uh, on the absolute righteousness of the believers. All these people followed the teaching of the Old Testament. Now, would they also follow the teaching of Jesus? This is a big change from the moment of crucifixion when the disciples feared for their lives and the survival of the Jesus movement was deeply in doubt. Their Messiah, whom they had expected to be a conqueror, throwing off the yoke of the Romans and taking on the mantle of king of the Jews, had been put to death by hanging on a tree. They expected to be next, or at least to be arrested. Yet, in this passage, we hear the apostles proclaiming with bold confidence, fearlessness, and assurance, the risen Christ. So what went on in between? First and foremost, the defining moment was the resurrection of Jesus. Christ was indeed unconquerable, just not in the way they thought. It took a while for them to wrap their heads around that. It's hard to know what they expected next, but once again, it was something far beyond their ability to anticipate. Jesus turned it all over to them. He recommissioned Peter 
and ascended to heaven. Now it was up to them to maintain the movement. Then came Pentecost. They had been witnesses to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But there was another witness, too. The Holy Spirit, who God has given to all who choose to follow him, came to them and filled them, and from that moment they knew who they were. These are big, dramatic events, and it is so tempting to see things turning on a dime. But it goes deeper and slower than that. The book of Acts is about the steady growth of the Jesus movement through the retelling of the story of Christ. The story is compelling and powerful. The telling, retelling, and growing familiarity of the story built trust and confidence in the apostles, which led them to take the authority of the story to stand against the authorities of the day. But this isn't just about what happened to the followers of Jesus 2,000 years ago. It is the story of how Christianity grew and continues to grow to this very day. The story of Jesus has been repeated around the world as believers speak out about their faiths and Jesus' love. It is a story that has resulted in repeated persecution and yet continues to spread. It is a story of an ideal where the faithful find they have a new authority to speak out on the side of truth, faith, and justice. Worship issues a challenge to live out our faith daily. It is where we make our promise to God that we will follow, we will represent the faith, we will be witnesses. Our call as a faith community is to grow the story and bear witness to what we know and believe. This is not without the elements of discomfort, fear, discord, and doubt that, the, that fill the story of the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. While we do not usually risk imprisonment, flogging, or crucifixion, we do risk prejudice, rejection, and persecution from those around us, even from our own family, even from our own church, in our quest to speak the truth. However, as for the apostles, in the repeated retelling of the resurrection, there is a time when the fear moves over and confidence begins where we rest on the authority of faith rather than of the world and become witnesses. Civility has its limits when it comes to conflict and justice. Etiquette must take a back seat to ethics. There may be risk to what we do, but what about the risk of what we do not do? Sometimes we must take a stand even in the face of disagreement and uncertainty. In his book, Bearing Witness in the Kingdom, which we have in our church library, Dr. Darrell Stevens notes, the witness of the church has never been confined, confined to polite conversation. There are times we must be faithfully disruptive and overturn a few tables. The Holocaust taught us that silence is complicity. The story of Jesus and the story of the apostles is one of boldness, speaking to power. If we are to take on this mantle, we too must speak to power in situations of our time, taboo issues, abuse, secrets that authorities, including church authorities, have been frightened to acknowledge, and institutionalized prejudice that comes from culture rather th than from faith. Where do we find the boldness in the faith community of today? Where do you find that boldness in yourself? What would you say if the tape came off your mouth? Pastor Brad once said, I am not a Paulian or a Johnian. I am a Christian. We are followers of the teachings of Jesus Christ. Over time, the Bible has been codified, added to, interpreted, and used to justify all manner of personal and institutional prejudices and special interests. 
there definitely are original passages that reflect more upon the writer's culture and biases than the love of God. As a society, we have a problem with inflexible institutions and leaders who will not allow themselves or others to move with the freedom of God's spirit. The Gospels and today's scripture call such institutions and leadership to accountability in Peter's time and in our own. When I was at Bell Labs, I was charged with implementing an ISO 9000 quality system in the basic research area, a bit like herding cats. <coughs> in such implementations, people tend to layer on their own pet rules and practices. I later mentored a woman who was becoming a consultant in the field of quality. I explained to her how that this mission creep might happen and told her she needed to understand the standard at least as well as anyone she was dealing with. So when people would pontificate, ISO 9000 says that, she would pull out her copy of the standard and say, show me where it says that. These days there are many public faces of Christianity and they are likely to tell you what Christianity is. If they are to raise money, they need to have a brand, and that is often built through hot-button issues. Sometimes I agree with what they say, but more often I will agree only with some or maybe none. Too often reality falls short of the teachings of Jesus. A friend of mine once expressed surprise that I was a Christian since I did not sound or act like a lot of the public talking heads. I told her that sometimes a lot of things get piled on to Christianity that aren't in the Gospels. We need to read the Gospels often to be sure of the witness we bear. The Gospel of Luke begins with these words. Many others have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events which have been fulfilled among us exactly as those happenings were passed on to us by the original eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. I, too, have investigated everything carefully from the beginning and have decided to set down in writing for you so that you may see how reliable the instruction was that you received. It is always a good reminder to read the best version of the words and deeds of Jesus that we have. I am a follower of the teachings of Christ. Jesus is all the brand I need. I have to tell, retell, and live his story. And sometimes I ask people, show me where Jesus says that. Jesus did not move among the rich and famous of his day. He noted the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, and overturn the tables of the money changers. In Luke 4.18, Jesus says, The Most High has anointed me to bring the good news to those who are poor. God has sent me to proclaim liberty to those held captive, recovery of sight to those who are blind, and those in prison. Daryl Stevens draws a straight line from this to the issues of our day poverty, mass incarceration, lack of health care, systemic injustice, and inherited debt. Jesus preached to the poor and downtrodden. He healed the lepers, those possessed by demons, the woman who had, been, who had bled for 12 years. Social outcasts all. He welcomed the tax collectors, the Samaritan woman, and every other person who came to him if they had faith. Jesus' agenda of upending the political, religious, social power structure led to his crucifixion. But this did not just start with Jesus. Isaiah 1.17 says, Learn to do good. Search for justice and help the oppressed. Protect those who are orphaned and plead the case of those who are widowed. Charity is inherent in the whole of the Bible. John Wesley was, in his turn, 
a champion of social justice. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. He was an advocate of better working conditions and education for children. In those days, slavery was seldom challenged on humanitarian or religious grounds. In fact, evangelical leaders often used the Bible to justify slavery. John Wesley was the first well-known Christian leader to take a decisive stand against slavery. His last letter was written less than a week before his death to William Wilberforce, a young abolitionist leader. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you'll be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them together stronger than God? Oh, be not weary of well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of his justice. In our baptismal covenant, covenant, each and every one of us was asked, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Too often we are timid to speak out against injustice. We shut ourselves off from the world and hide behind walls of fear. Let us rise instead and be the people of God let us rise and be a living testimony of the way of Christ. Let us rise and join in the Spirit's song of living. Grant us a voice, O God, that breaks into all silence and speaks out in your name. May we hear the gospel words that speak to poverty and for justice and proclaim heaven's authority and love's agenda. When others wish to silence the good news, may we shout it even louder, as Peter and the apostles did. Sometimes, Christian witness must contradict and challenge the world powers. In this fractured world, we know that defending one person or group will offend another, but that is no reason not to do it. The United Methodist Church says this on their discipleship ministry website about the Eastertide that they have dedicated to being witnesses. Now we make our commitment to be witnesses of the kingdom. What challenges face our word, world that need a word or presence from the faith community? What actions or s statements might be made to show where you are standing and whom you are standing with in this complicated environment? The 2016 version of the United Methodist Social Principles says we should be responsible for the basic rights of all persons to equal access to housing, education, communication, employment, medical care, legal redress for grievances, and physical protection. The UMC General Board of Church and Society has specific priorities on their website, including raising the minimum wage, climate activism, health care as a basic human right, pursuing God's com command of justice, liberation, and flourishing for all people to work for the civil and human rights of every person. Lest we feel too smug about this, the original name of this board was Prohibition, Temperance, and Morals, Public Morals. <laughs> Yet, we are at times, even within our own denomination, torn. Its history is far from perfect. In spite of Wesley's injunction, white Methodist ministers were <coughs> sometime apologists for American slavery and Jim Crow laws. They were active in repression of indigenous peoples, including the Sand Creek Massacre, in the civil rights era, they basically told black people to practice racial etiquette 
you know, stay in their place. Stephen's comments. Once white Methodists made this turn to civic theology, it became nearly impossible to critique U.S. policies and the injustices perpetrated by its dominant white culture without also implicating Christianity itself. The General Conference of the United Methodist Church continues to support the Book of Discipline wording that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. In contradiction, Aldersgate has taken a stand to bear witness as a reconciling ministry to stand for justice for our LGBTQ plus family, a position echoed by many others in the Pacific Northwest. As of our result, well, our push for full inclusion of our LGBTQ plus members, some traditional churches have commenced disaffiliation from the current United Methodist denomination starting May 1st. Uncomfortable times. In 2000, the UMC bore witness and issued a statement of repentance for its support of racism. In 2008, eugenics. In 2012, treatment of indigenous peoples. In 2019, the UMC Constitution was revised to acknowledge the marginalization of women. All of which bring me to three questions. What took them so long? When will it come time for the church to bear witness and repent treatment of our LGBTQ plus family? And to be honest, aren't all these types of discrimination still going on? In January, Pastor Wanji spoke about the anger directed towards Jesus when he disabused his hometown audience of the idea that they were insiders. Just as in Jesus' time, there are those who think of themselves as insiders in the church with an exclusive provenance on God's grace because God is on their side. At Aldersgate, all are welcome, and all means all. We are defining this place as someplace where there are no outsiders from God's love. Witness arises from a relationship and community, this community. Theologian Ada Maria Isasi Diaz was the first to define the term kingdom, which is much more than a cute non-patriarchal way to say kingdom. If we believe that all of humanity, all of creation is our kin, then how does our behavior change? As Jesus says in Matthew 25, 40, every time you did this for the least of my sisters or brothers, you did it for me. We tend to separate love of God from love of our neighbors. But this passage makes it clear that they are really parts of a single love. Kinship is not about liking, agreeing with, being in control of, being family, or being part of one's church, but is because of our oneness under and with God. This remains the story of Jesus, and we must tell it over and over until it is fully heard. Each of us, must confront reactionary responses to movements for justice in ourselves, in our institutions, in society. Doing the right thing for an unpopular cause is never easy. Most people are more comfortable with a God of compassion than a God of justice. So how do we confront our kin about not acting like kin? For truly, we must bear witness both to and for those whose actions and words we oppose. It starts with humility. It is easy to make laws and rules for other people. We must start by living by the rule of love and kindness ourselves. It starts by truly hearing others. Sometimes hardest of all, in turn, is to bear witness to the grace within even the people with whom we most profoundly disagree. But do it, we must. 
even they must not be outsiders in this place. All means all. Together, let us all tell the story of Jesus, which is always a story of love, which always conquers all. In the words of Gamaliel and echoed by John Wesley, if it comes from God, not only will you be unable to destroy them, but you might find yourselves fighting against God. Even as we are in the business of changing the world, we are being transformed too. Bearing witness transfigures us. We must choose who and what we stand up for. To be true to Jesus, we must stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. Because in the words of Cindy Andre Johnson, you will never look into the eyes of someone God does not love. Can we do less? As Marvin Gaye said, can I get a witness? And as Joe Lee says, can I get an amen? Amen. We got one slide. <laughs> Who gracious God, that they may serve your purposes in the world, and we offer ourselves as witnesses to your love. In our daily living, help us witness in Christ's name and on Christ's behalf. Amen. For the next one, if you are able, you are going to want to stand up. Am I there? Yeah, I'm there. Oh, let's get that on. Somehow, I let coffee be more important than a mask. <laughs> All right, back on. While you are standing, I want to ask a favor of you. There are people in this church who toil in silence and often go unrecognized. And uh, I know that several of them are watching us right now. I know that they are watching our Facebook feed. So if you could, the camera person over there, if you could figure out a way to get all of the congregation in the picture, and if I could get all of the congregation to turn and face the cameras, please. And I learned just, Keith taught me this, to say, Thank you to Bill and Patty Ferguson, yeah. to Wan G, hello Wan G, <laughs> and to Jen, who are not here. And so long as you're turned to face the quiet people, some of the quietest people you'll ever know, <laughs> thank you Michelle, thank you Jason, thank you Patrick, thank you Joe, because we cannot have gotten through these last two years without those people serving us. Now, I'm going to take a further liberty because, as you know, when teacher's gone, the substitutes can make the rules. <laughs> so, I want to teach you a vitally important lesson for Methodists. Now, Methodists need to learn this, so I'm going to count one, two, one, two, three, four, and I want you to count on, I want you to clap on two and four. One, one. Keep it up. Now the second thing, just keep clapping. Don't say amen. Say amen. <laughs> amen. Good. Amen. 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 Good job, but I think I need more people in the choir up here. Hugh, I need you up here. You get that microphone. You take it from Carrie, and you get up here and sing it with us, please. And you're all in my choir. Now, if this is just like the movie, you can start clapping. You'd all be wearing nuns' habits in black and white. And I'd be Sidney Poitier. But I'm not, and you're not. But we're going to do our best interpretation of Sidney Poitier and those German nuns from Lilies of the Field singing this song. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Sing it over. Amen. Help me, Hugh. Amen. I hear you now. Amen. Amen. See the little baby wrapped in a manger. Christmas morning, amen, amen, hey, see him in the temple, talking with the elders, marvel at his wisdom, amen, 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 rise it up, down at the Jordan, John was baptizing Amen. and saving all the sinners. Amen. Amen. Hey, see him at the seaside Amen. talking Amen. with the fishermen Amen. and making them disciples. Amen. Amen. Hey, still not high enough. He's marching in Jerusalem. Pick it up. Amen. Branches hey, in pomp and splendor. Hey, amen. Amen. Hey, see him in the garden. Praying to his father. In deepest sorrow. Hey, amen. Hey. Before Pilate, and then they crucified him. But he rose on Easter. Hey, amen. 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 One more up. Hallelujah. Amen. He may live forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, do it again. Hallelujah. Hey, he died to save us. And he lives forever. Amen. 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 Nice job. Two and four. Clap on two and four. All right. to be the front man for this wonderfully talented group here, the wonderfully talented group back there, and the wonderfully faithful group out there. Go forth to take part in the story of God's love. Go with courage, uplifted by the example of those who have gone before and vitalized by the mystery and possibility that lies ahead. And may God continue to bless and keep you. Amen. 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 <laughs> 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 <laughs>